Hello, Faith family. Welcome to our uh, panel, uh, post-sermon discussion panel. So we're going to have two main segments with this panel. First, I'm just going to ask what, what we generally go through, and, and that's just asking, hey, how did you benefit from the sermon? And then we're going to move into what Kyle talked about with his uh, uh, application point, his practical point of application from the sermon. So, so first of all, uh, Dan, I'm going to start with you. How did you benefit from today's sermon? Well, one of the things that was so encouraging to me, toward the end, he just talked about friendship with God how uh, Abraham, Moses were t spoken of as friends of God. And, and I loved how th the particular way he brought this Old Testament passage to Christ and the gospel is through that friendship um, and how we were created to be friends with God, but then through the fall, we are now, as Ephesians says, enemies of God. And something's got to change in order for us to be friends again. And that's what I love how he said that Christ uh, became the enemy of God on the cross so that we could have that friendship restored, we could become the friends of God. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just, uh, that puts it all in perspective. It's like, the, as we're talking about human friendships and even spiritual uh, friendships with, with one another, it's so great to keep that, that ultimate friendship. It, and, and there's no, and that that's the, uh, can be a great cure against earthly loneliness and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. When, when we realize that we can have that perfect friendship with God. And when we have that, that is a model for the other friendships that we can enjoy in this, in this life. But that was just such a great way to bring it to the gospel and just thinking about how we can, can have that friendship with God restored through Jesus Christ. Hmm. Thank you. That was great. Matthew, what about you? Yeah. So I, I think, first of all, I think someone needs to acknowledge uh, the pastoral prayer that, that mm. uh, Kyle always puts so much thought yeah. mm -hmm. and, and into his pastoral prayers. Um, and I wrote this, this quote down because I just, I, I just felt like this uh, is it such a great place to be mentally before you hear any exposition of the word. And he said, um, we have too low a view of the offensiveness of our sin and too high a view of the sincerity of penitence for our sin. And then he asked God to increase our awareness uh, through the text uh, uh, of our sin in light of God's holiness. I just think that's such a wonderful place to, to begin mm -hmm. any sermon uh, that you're going to be listening to. As far as the, um, like the meat of the sermon goes, um, we live in an increasingly individualistic culture, and this text shows that the Bible has something to say um, about our tendency to try to go it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, he, Kyle said that, that the, the enemy tries to drive us away from the pack. Um, you know, you're not a tough guy or a, or a tough girl if you try uh, to take on Satan's attacks by yourself. You're, you're dead meat, you're lunch. And uh, I just thought that was a, a great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. No, thank you. Thank you both so much. So, okay, so, so let's move into this uh, uh, practical application point. And um, uh, it, it's really about how do, how do we make uh, Christ centered friends? Like, what is that? What does that look like? Um, maybe discuss some of the, the differences uh, between um, a Christ-centered friendship versus just what, what the world would just refer to as a, as a friendship. So, uh, Matthew, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. So I think, first, if you, if you um, want to make Christ-centered friendships, I think you need to decide if that's really what you want. Mm. Um, you know, like any endeavor that we undertake for the cause of Christ, there is a, an earthly price to be paid. Um, your, your old friends probably won't like your new friends very much. Your, uh, your family members who aren't believers probably just won't understand these friendships that you have. But most of all, your, your own flesh will be um, challenged constantly by a true Christ-centered friend. And you know, if you, if you want to have awkward conversations, if you want to have your sin brought up uh, over, over lunch, you know, go looking for a Christ-centered <laughs> friend. Uh, I, I've, I've been that friend in some instances, and I've had friends, uh, you call me out on things, it's super awkward, it's super awkward, and you don't, we don't naturally want to mm -hmm. go and find people who are going to to challenge us, but, but right. I think it's, it's important to decide, this is really what I want. Count the and, cost. Yeah, will, count yeah. the cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm. yes. Great. No, thank you. I, I think that's a great point. That's what I, we, I can't remember where it was in the sermon that, that Kyle, uh, maybe it was when he was talking about, about that point, but mm -hmm. I, I remember thinking that of just like, man, me, a lot of us say we want friends, mm -hmm. but like, but do you really want a true friend? Yeah. Uh, uh, but I, it, Proverbs, right? Faithful are the wounds 
of a brother. Yeah. So. And as, as far as practical ways to, to make friends, I, I think you'll elaborate a lot more on this, but I can't imagine making gospel, Christ-centered friends outside of the context of the local church. It just doesn't make any sense outside of the context of the local church. I don't, I don't know how you, how you make Christ-centered friends if you're not attending church regularly, if, if that's not, if that's mm -hmm. not your, your avenue for, for making, for your primary avenue for making. I think you should certainly be friends with your neighbors and, and you right. know, all of that, you know, but if that's not where you go for those true friendships that, that like we described, like Kyle described in the sermon, uh, I, don't, I don't know where else you're, you're planning on looking. Mm -hmm. Or where, where else do you even want to look? Mm -hmm. or, or want to have <laughs> friendships here? So right. right now, thank you. So okay, Dan, uh, what, what about you? Practice. Well, I like how you talked. You talked a little bit about the difference between earthly and and Christ-centered friendships. There is a lot of of a commonality there. I mean, you think about. I think C.S. Lewis has an essay about like friendship, and at some point you you realize you too you you have some sort mm -hmm. of. Um, Common interest, common uh, delight, uh, or some, whether it's a hobby, a sporting activity, or you're in the same uh, stage of life together where you work together, you're uh, in the same stage of life as far as uh, marriage or parenting or something. You have something in common, and then you en enjoy being around each other and talking about that thing that you have in common. Well, for a Christian, what do we have in common? Christ. We have people here in this church from different countries, uh, different racial backgrounds, um, different political uh, persuasions, and yet we can be dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, in fact, because of the commonality that we have in Christ. We have uh, experienced the forgiveness of sins through faith in Christ, and we can have that kind of uh, close relationship. So it's basically, once you have that commonality, it's building upon that. doesn't mean that you can't talk about the weather or your give each other a hard time about our, our, our uh, sports teams or whatever. Um, but that, that's the, that ultimately, that's the thing that really uh, ties us together, and then you build off of that. And then just practical, um, let me echo what, what uh, Matt says. You want to make Christ-centered friendships, go to church. Like, no joke, people, go to church. Um, attend. Um, and there's just so many different reasons that people uh, don't go when they could. Like, obviously, there's sickness, there's deployment, you're out of town, whatever. This but COVID like, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, or for, if, if, if you're able to go to church and you don't, like, you work through those issues. What, or if it's, if it's you're struggling with sin and you don't feel worthy of church, well, guess what? We're all struggling with sin. So come join the rest of us uh, uh, struggling sinners here, but don't just uh, abandon church. If you need a, you're, you're a, a supreme introvert, it's just worth making the effort to come out of your shell to build that. And even come a few minutes early so you can talk with people before the service. And don't be willing to stick around and have conversations with people afterwards. Doesn't mean you have to force it, but um, at least be available. So go to church. Uh, I can't echo what you said about how the local church um, is, is a, why, are you, why would you try to build those Christ-centered? I mean, there, there's great, we know in the military, there's great parachurch Christian organizations. Right. There's just stumbling across brothers and sisters in Christ out and about or in the workplace, and that's special. But why would you go without this wonderful means of building uh, Christ-centered friendships by finding a good local church? Uh, this one will seem obvious, but Christ uh, said it multiple times, be friendly. He who would have friends must show himself friendly. Um, so uh, I think the way Kyle puts it is be the friend you want to be. Um, if, you, if, you, if it's really important for you, for you to have someone acknowledge your birthday or when you have a baby or when you're going through something, are you looking for other people that you can have that kind of encouragement to? So be the kind of friend you want to be. And all of a sudden, I, I'm, you'll, you'll stumble in. Don't just sit around waiting for someone to befriend you. Uh, take initiative. And for those of us who are naturally introverts, I, people actually are, are shocked that I'm an introvert because I can be so high functioning. But yeah, I need, I need my alone time. And I can be so content with just being alone for long stretches of time. Like when COVID uh, hit, I basically had the museum on post to myself for like a couple months. <laughs> and I was day. as happy as a clam, <laughs> you know, just, and, um, but we, the, people like us need to make the effort to, to get out of ourselves and realize that it's, it's important. We need to get over yourself. Uh, people, they're too proud to 
uh, to reach out to others, or they think that they're self-sufficient, that they don't need other people, or they've been burned before, and so they're like, if anyone's seen Band of Brothers, uh, which if you're in the 101st, I mean, why haven't we watched Band of Brothers yet? But there's that scene where like a lot of the guys who'd, who'd seen a lot of combat, when the replacement soldiers would come in, a lot of times they felt like, oh, I don't, I don't want to get to know this guy because he's just going to die, and then I'm gonna, it's going to be hard. And so there was that feeling of like they almost didn't want to get to know the new replacement soldiers because they didn't want to be wounded again. Well, pe people can have that, especially at a church like this where people are coming and going. The, the old timers can feel like, oh, I don't want to like build a relationship because they're just going to PCS in three years and it's going to be hard. But we got to intentionally get over that, whether we've been burned by difficult relationships in the past or we're so focused on, oh, this person might leave and then I'm, I'm going to be hurt. But we just keep investing in people um, for eternity, because that's um, that, that that's so important, and then just avoid extremes. Like so many practical things in life, when it comes to friendships, uh, uh, avoid the extremes. So one extreme is being distant, like just intentionally staying away because you don't want to get hurt by anyone, or because you 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 think that you're too strong, you don't need friendships. So avoid that because it's really hard to make friends when you're when you're intentionally distant. Mm -hmm. And then the other extreme is to be to want friends so much that you're needy and you're um, clingy, and that, that can be just really hard. And it's because you've made an idol out of friendship. Um, and so you need to just be in the middle where you're available to, for other people to make friends with you. And, and I've told this, it's, it's great uh, advice for people who are networking, who are thinking about career stuff. You know, the, the worst thing in the world is when you're just, you know, at a cocktail party and everyone's looking for, they're just asking questions because they want to know what you can do for them. Sure. Like the best way for networking, the best way to make friends is to be genuinely interested in other people. Like, oh, ask where they're from or where, where they live in the area and just try to ask. People are generally are willing to talk about themselves. And so if you just put the onus that, oh, I'm going to find out about this person and find things that we have in common or if they, they're into something different than me, like, genuinely, sincerely ask them, oh, why are you interested in that? And, 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 and it's amazing that how people will open up to you, and then you'll build that friendship. And if they're polite at all, they'll ask some things about you, you know? And um, it's it just practical things like that. It, but it's so important that you do it intentionally with other believers uh, because we need that kind of relationship to, to um, help uh, one another focus on the truth and be accountable and, uh, and to... to to fulfill that loneliness. Like I'm, I remember being on deployment overseas, uh, only one other real believer, my chaplain that I felt was really a strong believer, and I was away from home for Christmas, and yet I never really felt lonely because I knew I had, I, I had my uh, earthly family who were also my spiritual family. We stayed in contact, but then I knew I had faith family, church back here praying for me and keeping me in mind, and I knew that like, hey, while I'm here, I'm just going to focus on who can I, how, what gospel opportunities can I have here on deployment and try to pour myself into others as much as possible and not focus on myself. And so I didn't feel lonely or here as a single guy at a church full of married people with kids popping out everywhere. <laughs> like, hey, I just focus on like, who can I encourage? How can I be a help here at this ministry? And I don't have time to be lonely. Um, so those are just some, some practical uh, uh, things there. And then uh, folks here who are looking to really reach out to some people who are feeling lonely, like Kyle said, uh, we know folks who would love to have a phone call, would love to meet up, and we're happy if, if, if uh, the Lord's laid it on your heart to, to help uh, people who really need a friend, talk to the elders and we can get you in touch. Hmm. Oh, great. Thank you. And that, uh, some of what you said leads into kind of where I want to uh, bring us to now, and that's just discussing, um, if I can get my phone to go the right way. There we go. Um, some, just some challenges to forging mm -hmm. Christ-centered friendships. So uh, you, you mentioned this with, um, especially the military. We have a lot of military in, in mm -hmm. here, but, but uh, life transitions can impact anybody and everybody, right? right? Like it, it could be a, uh, a new kid, not having a kid, getting married, um, uh, loss, right? When the and people experience loss, like a, a part of you feels different. Like you feel like you you start to uh, maybe not become someone else entirely. Mm -hmm. You're you're a believer first and foremost, but there's just difficulty. Mm -hmm. There's life transition. Not to mention moving um, mm -hmm. with the with the military and trying to find another church. And oh man, it oh faith family is good, but it's not like my last church, you know. Or or then vice versa. Like you move away and like oh I just. I miss faith family. Like if you ever have to move away from the church, then we want you to just be fully invested where yes. the Lord has brought you. So, um, so what, what kind of responses, uh, can you have? And, and Dan, you, you mentioned some of these, but I just want to 
uh, hit these more, more in depth. Um, just because these are some common responses that, that we've received um, o- over the years. So some, a phrase like, I don't want to get to know people all over again. What, how, how, do we, how do we respond yeah. to this? Well, I just you're looking at only the negative side, the pain of saying goodbye to people that you've met. But on the flip side of that coin is to, to, to have fond memories of people all over the world, all over the country, wherever God leads you, where you have friend, family. That could, that's, like a, that's a wonderful thing. It's like, oh, I'm going to be here for a while, and I'm going to build some wonderful relationships, and I'm going to move somewhere else, and then I'm still going to be able to... I mean, I'm going to... All these people back there that I know and, and I love and love me, and uh, you're, you're only looking at the, the, the difficult side. The, the, the beautiful side is to look back at uh, how good God was to you at all these different areas to lead you to, to friends and people that you might reach back to at some point. You know, you're going through something or the Lord moves you back. Um, and especially when you don't just think about this as people meeting my needs for friendship, but like th- these friendships are not all just about our emotional well-being. These friendships are investments for eternity. Like this is one of the ways that we are furthering the kingdom of God is through these friendships. So it's like, of course I'm going to want to like, wherever God plants me, I'm going to want to be involved in advancing his kingdom, whether that's through um, uh, that's through, and that's one of the big ways he does that is through Christian friendship. So it's not just the the pain of saying goodbye, but it's the joy of like, wow, I've, I'm leaving some 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 dear friends. My time here was not wasted, and so that gives me the encouragement when I'm going to some new place where I don't know anybody that God's going to do the same thing for me there. That if I if I keep an open heart, open mind. God's going to be able to, he, ha, he has new friends, new family there for me to get acquainted with. And then the, it's no longer the, the whole fear of, uh, will I find someone? It's the joyful expectation of, I'm sure God has some people for me there. Right. It just, it's a matter of just looking at the, of getting your eyes off the negative uh, aspect, which is real. When to, saying goodbye to people is, is hard. Um, but just think about the joy of, like, I've, I've invested in these people. There's, there's people, like Kyle said in that um, that, that phrase from the Wonder Years. Like, there are people back here that I've left behind who remember me and miss me. And uh, that, that means I've, I've left an impact. And, and they should think about that as if God moves you around a lot through your career or whatever. Like, that's just that's a neat opportunity that other people who maybe grew up in the same county, the same area, don't have. That has its own special benefits. But there, there's a blessing to moving around and being able to build these wonderful friendships with people all over the place. So, and then you never know how Lord, the Lord at some other future place, well, you, met, you made this friendship in D.C., and then the Lord took you different ways, and then you reconnected some other random place. You just, you just never know. So just have a bigger view. Realize that God has a big plan. And it's just, it's just something you should do. Wherever you go, build good Christian friendships. It sort of has a, a spider web Effect. Yeah, it's something that that I've, I'm not in the military. We don't, you know, but Alice and I have moved yeah. four times in four and years. That's since what we younger got generations are going to move even more. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing that that I've kind of, I guess it's sort of a comforting thing for me. We've been here a little over a year, and we've just in in, in a year we've lost several friends yes. moving away because of just the military and culture here, here. Yeah. and we're <laughs> staying here. And the thing that that seems to give me a lot of hope is now I've got a friend in Germany. Yes. I've got a friend out west. I've got a, you know, in, in just one year, now I've got, I've got this spider mm-hmm. web effect of friends that, that live in all kinds of different places that are making connections there. Now I have connections to the people that mm-hmm. they're connecting with. It creates a, a, a sense that the world is very small. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I just think that that's, yeah. you know, it's like you're, you're just increasing yeah. your, your web yeah. of, I mean, of influence. Another example, I did a missions trip in Africa right at the summer after I graduated from college. I'm still Facebook friends with people in Kenya and South Africa, mm. and it's kind of cool to just be like, oh, yeah, there's brothers and sisters yeah. in Christ worshiping the Lord in, in other parts of the world. Yeah, yes. and if they move somewhere cool, they'll invite you to your house. Exactly. <laughs> that's why you always want to have good <laughs> Christian friends in Florida, so you can go down and mooch yeah. off them on spring break. Yeah. Right? Don't, don't wait until you find out they're moving to somewhere cool, and then yeah. be like, oh, I need to get <laughs> see, friends there, so go. I have a place to stay. That's right. That's right. No, and I, I, I see what y'all are driving at. I mean, it really, like, Friendship, ultimately, I mean, it has so little to do about us. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just in the, same the most way. satisfying friendships, because if they're just yes. a needy, what can you give me? That's just not ultimately the same kind of satisfying friendship. Yes, it's more like mm-hmm. a dependency. Right, and, and I think some of the most uh, uh, beautiful moments of friendship that I've I've either either experienced myself or just I usually see it happen more so is being able to connect 
uh, certain believers with other believers and mm. just to give them that community. Christian networking. And, yeah, yes. that's so and, great. And it just the it's it was the it was the right encouragement needed. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the necessarily the like, oh man, I know this person who can give you this financial thing or monetary thing it would no they can be a, a brother sister in christ to you yes. in this area that that's a gift to the body so mm -hmm. um okay so it's something one of y'all mentioned and this moves uh in, into our next point like people that are just introverted uh in in nature you kind of mentioned that and they're the more, shy introverts yeah, they're not the so, high functioning introverts um, gotcha. yeah yeah so, some some of us uh, us more introverted types of people when uh COVID happened in the particular job we had there's like you don't have to tell me twice to go home. Like that's that's just awesome, right? Yeah. Um, but but uh, I, I think that I think that there are some difficulties um, with with this with, with people that are prone to this this type of personality. Um, and and we, we've seen it before when people say things like, "Well, I just I can't make friends at at this church," and like mm -hmm. that's that's the issue that I that I have here. Um, how do we how do you respond to people that, that are just like, I just, I can't make friends here? Well, for, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the greatest friend maker in the world, but like that was one of the many things that drew me to this church. I used to, you know, live in an apartment down the road and I drove by and I was like, oh, I'll check them out. They had some good rec book recommendations. But obviously the main thing was Kyle and Vance's uh, teaching at the time. But then I was just amazed at how friendly this church was. And I've visited lots of churches, and it honestly doesn't bother me. I've been a visitor in, in lots of different churches so many times. But I could tell, like, above and beyond, like, this, it, it wasn't just the fake kind of welcoming either. It was just a, a sincere, like, wanting to get to know me. And um, I felt incredibly welcomed. And I know we, we have people that, that do that, and we even have people who volunteer to specifically be on the greeting uh, ministry for that purpose. But... I think a lot of that is just make the effort. There's a lot of people here who, if you just make the slightest effort, will, will meet uh, that thing. And it could be something practical like, how about you get here early instead of 10 minutes late? You'll have a lot more time to chit-chat with people if you're here uh, available. And if you, you know, uh, we all have different things and none of us are all the greatest at small talk. But if you at least hang out, don't rush out uh, right away, you'll have uh, opportunities um, that way. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's more of it's a mindset rather than any technique. Just if you're generally interested in some person, regardless of whether they're in a different generation or life circumstance or career path, just make the awkward effort to ask them their name and find out a little bit about them and just make that effort. And I think the vast majority of people who are members and or even attend here would be happy to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that, something you mentioned earlier, uh, it, it being being the friend you want to have, mm. right? Like people will say, you know, I want I want somebody to to reach out to me. Mm. Like I want somebody to call me, or or like I'm sick. I want somebody to bring me a meal. Or it, and then it, it is it is a fair question to ask. Like, well, have you do you do that actively for other people? Mm. Uh, I think I, Kyle or maybe you. I, I can't remember which which uh, uh, message it was. Uh, talked about you know, people sitting down together, and and if you're both of the mindset of like, well, that person should reach out to me, and you happen to be a visitor of a church, and they happen to be a visitor of church, like no one, no one's going to meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, is like, just where, where does this start? I mean, think about Jesus. He was the most uh, hospitable being we've ever we've ever experienced on this earth. Uh, he did not. He did not wait. He was the one that took the initiative, mm -hmm. and and I think that could be harder for the those more introverted type of personalities. Like, but but we are called as believers to take that initiative, yeah. and, um, and, and and to suffer the the potential hurt that that's caused in that. You know, I've mm -hmm. seen that time and time again uh, with with people that I love near and dear. You know, I, my my wife has experienced that years and years ago. Uh, there, there was a situation in particular where she really put herself out there. And it was just, it was just like, yeah. man, you, it would have been more helpful if that, yeah. if that person had been like, like oh, yeah. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Instead, you know, it was just so passive and, and, it, and it's really hurtful, but yeah. that did not stop her yeah. from like, well, I'm still going to talk to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's, yeah. that interaction doesn't. Well, and that's, mean, I love my, my own, my cousin who's a pastor back home in Indiana. He just talks about like, listen, if you're, that's the price of loving someone, you're going to get hurt. Um, uh, if you are sincerely making the effort to love someone, that you're making yourself vulnerable to that person, and you can get hurt, small ways and big ways. Um, but that's uh, that just uh, goes with the territory. 
But it's still worth it, though. That's the assurance we have from the scriptures that it's worth it. Right, mm -hmm. right. There's, um, uh, so Dale, Dale Carnegie, he, he once said this, a generation ago, that you can make more friends in two months by showing interest in other people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in you. And that, uh, that's to your point of what yeah. you said earlier. Is that from How to Win Friends and Influence yeah. People? Uh, possibly so. so <laughs> hey, know. that's great. That's great Don't for. Well, no, hey, that's that, that's that's great for like business stuff. I mean, there's a lot of practical wisdom. I've read the book, and yeah. like obviously, if that's your your Bible, then you're missing out. But like, yeah, there's some pract there's practical wisdom about like being friendly yes. in that book. Yeah, there's a John Piper book he wrote uh, called Finally Alive, and it, and it was talking about evangelism, mm. and that 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 was one of the main points of like how do i be more evangelistically driven and it and it is to show genuine interest in other people yes. and, it, mm -hmm. and if you're not genuinely interested in other people yeah. then then like i you're selfish how, how can you, <laughs> y yes i mean there, it's really hard to to yeah. put it in a in a kind pastoral yeah. way that like you need to be yeah. interested in other things other than what yeah. interests you mm -hmm. so. and that's where you but, that's where that goes back to that foundation that Kyle talked about is like it, it, that's either because you're, you're not a friend of God and you need, to, you need to experience that friendship with God through the gospel of Jesus Christ for the first time, or you're just a Christian who just isn't reveling in that friendship with God because like, our love for others should be an overflow of rejoicing in the love of God. Well, I think, you should, you know, I think it's good counsel to tell people to stop, stop looking for other things that you have in common with people besides the gospel. Mm -hmm. When you come to church, you know, that's why you end up with churches that are... You know, biker churches or churches that are just that revolve around some mm -hmm. some hobby uh, or, or, or a particular theological you know mm -hmm. minutia issue um, you know you can become friends with people who you might not have anything in common mm -hmm. with simply because of the fact that you are both believers and I think yes. we mentioned this in one of the panels in the past there is a sense in which the spirit in you recognizes the yes. spirit in somebody else and there's a there's always going to be a connection there you know I mean, you might not want to go fishing mm -hmm. with them but there's there's there is always going to be a, a deeper connection yes. between two people who are believers than there are you know with your non-christian friends and that's something i love about this church in particular i think at least in my experience since i've been here summer of 2016 i feel like they live up to the name faith family church mm -hmm. uh as a single guy, at first I, I saw that title of the church, I'm like, is a single guy welcome here? Is it all about the family? But then when I realized it's a family of faith, I'm like, oh yeah, I've, I've felt that. They really do a great job here of welcoming other believers as their family. So it's, it's just been uh, uh, one of the many reasons I'm hoping to stick around this area when I get out of the army. So. Great. No, that's great. And then, so, so uh, we've addressed some things just with more the more introverted type of people. What about the more outgoing yeah. type of people? Uh, it, there's the common expression, you know, like mile wide, inch deep, right? You're, you're like, yeah. man, no, you know, Kyle, like listen to yeah. Kyle's sermon, like, nope, got tons of friends. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. But but is there is there yeah. depth there? I mean, what would well, you I say? mean, if they're an extrovert, obviously there's different personality types, and that's wonderful. That's the way God made us. But they're in danger, probably more of making an idol of friendships or just like being dependent. Like I've always got to have someone around. I've always either got to be the center of attention or I've just got to, I feel, I, I feel insecure if I don't have somebody around. And so they, they might need to step back and actually it's like, maybe for you, you need to have some alone time while you work on your friendship with God. Mm -hmm. So that rather than, because since, you know, being outgoing is easy for you, you maybe you need uh, some alone time so that you can build that friendship with God so that you're capable of doing Christ-centered friendships. Whereas the introvert's like, get off your rear and, and go out there and talk to people who, who believe in Jesus and build those friendships. So that, could, that, could, that's, that can be part of it uh, mm -hmm. as well. And there, there's, a, there's a value of, I mean, sometimes we use the phrase uh, friend for just really a, merely an acquaintance. We're on good terms with them. We have some things in common. But uh, I think you, there's been social science on this, but you can only have so many true friends, you know, and that's okay. You can't be best friends with everybody. You should be friendly with everybody. Um, but yeah, the, those kinds of friendships that are really going to uh, uh, last, you know, th th those take effort, those take time, and you shouldn't expect to have uh, a whole lot of them. So if you're a natural extrovert and you've got lots of acquaintances, you might need to, to focus, like, where am I really going to get a long-lasting um, uh, depth, in-depth relationship. One of the things that I love about our church is that we don't have 800 different programs that you can sign yes. up for in order to serve. And I think that's probably a challenge 
for some of the extra, extroverts mm -hmm. in our church. They, they might be used to going to churches where they can go and sign up to, to deliver these things and to do this and to do that. And all, you know, those things aren't, they, they, right. they certainly have their place. But I, I, one of the things that I really love about this church is that is not our focus. Right. And those people tend to be challenged to stop making their entire Christian walk about signing up for some thing mm -hmm. or, or you know working with the youth or whatever. It's it's our our church is focused on the Sunday morning service, sitting here, uh, soaking in uh, the preached word. That's what we want you here doing. We we don't really you don't need to go sign up for all of this mm -hmm. stuff. Now if you are an we do need help with the child care yes. though. As Nikki <laughs> everything Nikki, that I just Nikki said is would beat us over the head <laughs> if we didn't say we uh, still need people to disciple children. So there you go. But, yeah. but like you said, it's there is there is a sense in which which extroverted people, and I'm not an extrovert. It's funny that the three people yeah, yeah. sitting up here talking in front of a camera yeah. are not extroverts. Yeah. But there is a sense in which people who are like that yeah. can make friendship or, or things resembling friendship yeah. an idol to them. And I also thought this would make a great uh, ladies panel too, because the way men and women do friendships, there's obviously there's lots of similarities and there's all, often different exceptions. I'm not saying that everyone's the same way, but there are generally some differences the way men make friendships and women make friendships, so uh, maybe in, in the future we should that'd make another good uh, ladies panel discussion. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. So. It's it's always amazing to me mm -hmm. because I can stand up here and lead worship every Sunday. That would make my wife incredibly nervous. Right. But but Allison can go and wa walk up to anybody mm -hmm. in a room and talk to them and just strike it. She did yeah. this at our last church. She walked up to a, a random woman in the room and just introduced herself because we were trying to get to know people. Turned out to be a, a famous author. We didn't oh, even, she just thought yeah. we were fangirling. I didn't even know who this person yeah, yeah. was. But, but that's just, it's just funny how, how, you know, different parts of your personality can, can exactly. you know, affect you. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I mean, just, but just make the effort to be, to allow yourself to be known by other people and make the effort to get to know others. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, and th thanks. Uh, it's all helpful for me to just to reflect on on what what Christian friendship looks like. And uh, and, and if and if there are some of you that are out there, you know, either either uh, just kind of tuning in via the internet, uh, not a part of faith family, or if you are a part of faith family, and and just we, we've all had those challenging friendships and maybe seasons of friendship. Mm -hmm. And and I. I think there is such value what what you said earlier um, in in like considering your your friendship with the Lord. I mean, it's remarkable that we can even say that. Yeah, but I mean, in evangelical circles, we're so flippant about Jesus being our friend. That you, yes. we don't, we 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 skip the steps. We're like, no, no, no. You you shouldn't get there until you realize the the seriousness of our sin and the price it took for us to be friends. It's so easy to start with. Jesus is your friend. We shouldn't always start with a lost person by saying Jesus is their friend because he's not. Yes. And that goes back to his, to Kyle's uh, mm. uh, opening prayer. I just think that yeah. that was such a great yeah. way to start out a sermon about friendship. Yeah. Yes. And, and then what we are called to as as true yeah. friends, like I, I can, I can be hurt by somebody that I consider a friend, but that doesn't mean that I I should break friendship with them. If they're yeah. If they're my brother in Christ, if they're my sister in Christ, I, I should seek only ever their good. Yes. And, uh, that, and and that's I think that's reflective. Of, it's not reflective of any goodness that we can yeah. impart to people, but it's just a reflection of Jesus toward us. Jesus, uh, he is with us to the end. Uh, he, he finishes up what, what we just often fail to even start, uh, let alone even try to attempt to finish. Uh, he, he, he's gracious. He's merciful. He's forgiving. He yeah. extends his love to us. Um, how much? How much more so? Right? Should we just express that uh, in the friendliest of terms to anybody that, that comes across our, our way? So, uh, any other thoughts? Or I just thought that I know Kyle was a little bit nervous about it, but I'll just reemphasize it because uh, I, I've seen too much of that going on, either personally or mostly just seeing it in our world today, in our nation today. He, he made that point. It was it was subtle, but it's something we need to hear: is that we shouldn't break friendships over. Uh, the outcome of elections, uh, political leaders, uh, masks or no mask, any of these contentious things uh, that Christians uh, disagree on. You know, it's fine to have strong opinions. Trust me, I've got tons of strong opinions. Um, but uh, I think that's something we need to hear. There's a lot of division, a lot of contention. 
And uh, it's, it's okay to, to, to take a stand for what you believe in, certainly for the gospel, but even um, if the Lord calls you to, to be involved in, in pol political or, or public issues, but to keep things in perspective. And don't, don't break uh, friendships, certainly not Christian friendships, uh, over things uh, uh, where people could, can disagree. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Okay, well, thank you so much. Hope you all have a great day. Amen.